All right, so I guess there's a reason that Spielberg decided to call this family the Fablemans because as far as the subplot goes, it is straight out of a fairy tale book, man. I'm telling you, if you replace this family with a black family, I'm watching a completely different movie. I'm either watching a Tyler Perry movie or I'm watching a remake of A Thin Line Between Love and Hate. But nonetheless, looks other than the subplot, Spielberg did his thing. This is an amazing movie, a phenomenal tale of why we love movies and how he got into it in his adolescent life. And nonetheless, guys, this is the Fablemans. Hey guys, it's your guy in the chair here, and look, this is my review for The Fableman, starring Paul Dano, Michelle Williams, Seth Rogen, Gabriel LaBelle, and was directed by Steven Spielberg, and our story follows the young Sammy Fableman, aka a, a version of Steven Spielberg, and a very loosely based tale of his adolescent life, and how his love of film grew into him becoming the GOAT director that he is today, and honestly, that's the best way I can describe this plot, because that's what was presented to me in the trailers. Now, there is a subplot that follows this film as well, and ID, IMD kind of gets into it a little bit it's just about like a family secret I will address the family secret well not not, not the actual secret itself because that's spoiling the movie but I will address the subplot in a, another part of my film or in another part of my review I'm only going to address right now essentially what I liked about the movie Alright, so as far as what I liked about the movie, look, anything involving Sammy Fableman himself, Gabriel LaBelle's performance, was absolutely incredible. First of all, w when I'm first introduced to this kid and he's being taken to the movies with his mom and dad and he's first exposed to the big screen and he's just w sitting there in wonderment and amazement about what's occurring on screen, that took me back to me and watching my first movie, which was Sam Raimi's Spider-Man, and I remember the entire time I stood up. I, was, I did not sit down that entire film. I was literally standing just in my little corner, my parents were watching. It. They were keeping me from running out into the aisles and stuff like that, but I was up, I was energetic, I was, my eyes were glued to the screen, that took me back to my first time watching my favorite, well, my first time watching a movie in theaters, and honestly, like I said, anything in this movie involving Sammy Fableman and his passion for filmmaking was absolutely phenomenal, man. Steven Spielberg, of course, captured so much magic in, in this kid's eyes and this kid's energy and his performance. I mean, like, you can tell how much he loves film. I loved e watching this kid film everything that it was occurring in his life. I enjoyed his passion. I And honestly, it's just a movie that reminds you of why we love movies in the first place and the different directions that it can take us in and how a story can really wrap all, all an audience of just a random assortment of people wrap put us all together in one place and we can enjoy something together honestly it captures the the magic of movie making and it in, it captures the magic of movie uh, watching, you know, just movie going and the movie going experience in general, man. This is a movie that really reminds you of why movies are such a special thing in the first place. And honestly, even if you're not like the biggest, at, like the biggest movie watcher in the world, everybody at least has some sort of movie that they can relate to that they love so very dearly to their heart. Everybody has at least one movie that stands out to them amongst the rest. Like we all have a movie that we care about so much more deeply than maybe any other, anybody else does. But that is the beauty of filmmaking itself. And honestly, you're reminded of that constantly throughout the film. You're reminded of just how much passion and how much effort goes into making movies in the first place and like I said the different directions that you know movie loving can take you you can be a director like Spielberg did you can get into acting and some kids in the film are inspired by that as well um, and then you can do what I'm doing now you can make movie reviews on YouTube man you, movies can take you anywhere and everywhere in this lifestyle and honestly that this movie reflects that very well um, as far as the rest of his family Michelle Williams Seth Rogen and Paul Dano, phenomenal performances. Well, very good performances. I Seth Rogen and Michelle Williams, I have to address the part of the subplot. But uh, Paul Dano, I really enjoyed him as, as the dad in this movie. I thought he was a very good character. Honestly... He wasn't as negative as the trailer was kind of making him out to be. Of course, he was the more sort of realistic, you know, parent in this situation where he kept telling him, you know, it's a hobby and things like that. But he wasn't as negative as I thought he was going to be. He was actually fairly supportive of Sammy's hobby or, you know, like I said, quote unquote hobby that became, you know, an illustrious career for him after a while. But honestly, no, like Paul Deneau's performance, it was really good to see him in this. It was crazy because, you know, it's a complete 180 from him playing the Riddler to a sane father in a, in a suburban town. Now he's. <laughs> it's you know it's fun to see him do that but Michelle Williams Seth Rogen they all give great performances um I mean Seth Rogen gives a good performance it's not nothing crazy but I mean um as far as his family goes his family's a very heartwarming story or his family's a very heartwarming part of the movie the entire time and honestly I gotta say 
Uh, one of my most favorite scenes has to deal with his uncle. I don't remember uh, the actor's name because it's a very long, very foreign name. I'm not going to even try to guess it, but it's, it's a scene involving his uncle coming to visit, and it's one of the most powerful scenes in the movie, man. He's really telling him that you are different than the rest of your family. You're like your mom and me. You're, you're the artsy kind. Like you're. He, he does this thing where it's like, you know, family and art, they're tearing you apart, and you got to be the person to tear it apart and do what you love the most. And honestly, there is a very powerful lesson in this film as well, as far is not doing things for the love and for the um, approvement of others, like doing it for yourself. And you can't, you know, you can't live for anybody else but yourself. There's a very, there's very powerful lessons throughout this movie. There's very powerful just messages in general, especially for me being the movie lover that I am. It just relates me back to all my passion and everything that I love about movies and the reason I'm doing these reviews in the first place, man. This movie just reminds me of that completely. And now I'm going to get to the subplot, which is the, which is a, I'm just going to talk about it. We're just going to get to the subplot. All right, so before I get into my little rant about the subplot, I need people to understand, I enjoyed the hell out of this movie. This is a very good movie. Sammy Fableman is a majority of this film. He's, like I said, he's the main focal point. There's just a subplot in this movie that I absolutely could not stand whatsoever. I hated everything about the subplot. Oh my gosh. And like I said, IMDB describes it as a family secret. I'm only going to leave it at that. It involves Michelle Williams' character and... It sucks that she... If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm referring to. And personally, it felt like I was watching a completely different movie when I'm watching the subplot uh, you know, play out on screen. I, I felt like I was watching something directed by Future. Yes, the rapper Future, as far as him giving out a message telling us that women ain't shit. Because Michelle Williams ain't shit in this movie, man. Oh, I can't get into... I, I really can't get into why, but if you've seen the movie, you understand what I'm referring to. You know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna be honest with you. There, there's a scene involving her miss like they're in cal they had to move to california for her dad for their uh for her husband's job like they're out there in california and for she's missing phoenix like that's where they previously lived for a certain for a certain reason and the reason makes me very upset and there's also a scene in the beginning of the movie where they they first had to move from their first home and they moved to phoenix and she was fighting very hard for a certain individual to come with them and once you realize what that reason is man you i I really had no respect for Michelle Williams' character in this movie at all. I couldn't stand her at all. I love Michelle Williams. Michelle Williams, her smile... It sucks, too, because Michelle Williams is such a... She's such a ray of sunshine. Her smile, her presence, her radiant essence on, on screen. I mean, she's amazing. Michelle Williams is awesome. And... I, it, it makes me so upset that I hated her character in this movie, man. I mean, seriously, like I said, this subplot could have been directed by Future. I felt like I was watching a completely different film because I left with two different lessons here. That, you know, you, you can put anything, you can do anything you put your mind to as and be inspired by whatever appears on film, on screen and film and things like that. And also, I left with the lesson that women are not shit, man. I understand men suck, but oh my God, the, no, women are ass, man. This is what... They, I can I couldn't believe I, it's crazy because I I can only describe it so bluntly like I can't really get into detail because I don't want to spoil the film for you at all but for me it was like kind of watching two different films when I'm watching this uh, subplot appear on screen and it's crazy because the old lady next to me I'm always catching these movies with old ladies that's what that's what you get when you go see matinees the old lady next to me called called what was going on before I even realized it and I was like damn. She's she's pretty on it. Okay, cool. But then I, I didn't think that's where this movie was going because the trailer does not present this subplot to you at all. This this trailer literally presents it as Spielberg's adolescent life, and I'm not sure if the, I'm, not, I'm not sure how you know real these this subplot was. Maybe this did happen in his life, and it and it sucks. It definitely does suck. But all I could do was walk away with the lesson that women just ain't shit, man. Michelle Williams, I I love you, but your character was. Miss Fableman, you're the worst. You are the worst person. You are the worst human on earth. I can't stand you. You you made me very upset. But that is the only part of this film I didn't like was the subplot. I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna go too deep into it. I mean, I'm this is my this is as best as I can go into it. Like I can't give details as to what the subplot is. But if you've seen the film, you know exactly what I'm referring to. Michelle Williams ain't shit, and we just gonna leave it at that. But overall, guys, look, this is a very magical and an amazing retelling of a man, of Spielberg's life and how he became, you know, one of the best directors to date today. And honestly, how film inspired him to be wh what he wanted to be, how he took his love of film and he ran with his dream. And honestly, like Kobe Bryant said, he put all his eggs in one basket and he got more eggs, man. Spielberg did whatever he could to make this career his. And honestly, it was just very inspiring to see. I loved every I loved everything about Sammy Fableman's part of this movie. And like I said, he is the the main focal point he is the majority of this film the subplot is ass hated it I don't 
ever want to see Michelle Williams play a character like this again because I love her too much to be seeing her do shiesty shit like this. It's, it's a damn shame that they got her doing shit like this, man. Michelle, you should have casted somebody else. I love Michelle Williams too much, man, for y'all to be putting her in roles like this. But look, overall, guys, this is a very incredible movie. I am, I loved it. It was very good. Sammy Fableman is an inspiration, man. Honestly, S Steven Spielberg himself from movies like E.T., Jaws, Catch Me If You Can, and so many others, man. Spielberg has just been inspiring people for years on years, and he's still doing it with this movie today. And guys, for all those reasons and so many more, I'm going to give The Fablemans a four out of five stars. All right, guys, so The Fablemans, have you seen it? What did you think about it? Look, be sure to leave a comment below, like, subscribe, share. Please, guys, let me know in the comments below what you thought of that subplot, man. Maybe I'm tripping. Maybe maybe I'm missing something. Maybe if somebody, if anybody in my comment is on, in, in my comment section is on Michelle Williams' side, I'm probably just not going to respond to you. I'm probably just going to let you get whatever you got to say off your chest and just let you, and just leave it there because I have nothing to say if you guys were on Michelle Williams' side. That may, If anybody was on Michelle Williams' side, that just shows how fucked up our society is. But <laughs> either way, look, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Be sure to... Like I said, like I said before, like, subscribe, all that good stuff, guys. Thank you so much for watching. This is your guy in the chair. More content coming to you soon.